to Anime Say, I'm Luke Halliday, I'm here again once more, this time for a mini episode review of Sket Dance, episode 74. Now, this episode was freaking absolutely batshit crazy, I don't know what the fuck Sket Dance is thinking, but... Okay, we had, let's just, let's just run through the episode first of all. The first part of the episode was entirely about, like, the Sket Dance Club going with, I think, Tsubaki. To meet Unyu's father, Unyu from the Sioux Castle, and they were trying to get a toy car that Bossoon wanted, that Subaki somehow ruined, like the wheel came off it. So they go, they go into her house, all they know is she's rich, they just know she's rich, and when they go to her house, they don't realise how rich she actually is until they get there. And they when they leave the school, and like a SWAT helicopter just comes down and takes them away. Takes them to her house. Her house turns out to be a giant, giant, literally, I want to know, it's like a giant could actually live in this house. This house is friggin' huge. It is absolutely a giant, giant house where her father's business seems to run. So they're greeted by these butlers at the door. and. I love the, the little zingers that Himiko and Boston just throw in, like, where they're just pretty much providing their thoughts. It's just like a skit there staple that I absolutely love. They're providing their thoughts on, like, the ridiculousness of what's happening. They go inside and they're talking about how it's way too big in here. It's, like, it's unnecessarily big. And they catch an elevator. The elevator. <laughs> Himiko is saying that she can live in the elevator. It's, like, that big. You can literally live in it. And anyways, they go down to the bottom, and she's like, oh, we're going to my house. So they go down, and under the freaking building is an entire town. <laughs> an entire town where all the butlers and shit live. So they go down, they're in this big-ass town. It's just like the roof, I don't even show you what the sky looks like in this town. It's just like a greyish sort of huge, huge sky. So they go down, and there is this town. <laughs> and they apparently walk for like 40 minutes, well, uh, what do they go, they go on a cart or some kind, like a carriage, to a mansion, sort of castle place, <laughs> and coincidentally, the castle place is like the only place that is reasonably sized in the entire Unyu family estate, which just so happens to have its own town, where all these people live, and it's apparently self-sustaining, they have farms and everything. It's pretty freaking crazy, and you know, it's classic skit there stuff, it's just completely batshit crazy, unexpected. And I was surprised by how fast paced everything was, and I'll get more onto that in a sec. It's pretty much the episode ends with the skit Dan all pretty much scared shitless, but <laughs> this overbearing rich family of Unyu's, the Unyu family. And Suddenly, the song starts playing, it's only been like 10 minutes in, and I'm, I'm a bit confused, because I'm like, why is the ending theme playing right now? And then, suddenly, the episode kind of restarts, and I don't know why they put the ending theme song in the middle of the episode. I don't understand. And what followed after that was probably the most weirdest thing I've ever seen on Skit Dance. I still struggle to even know what the hell I watched. I guess it was something to do with Captain being such a fast eater that she just literally puts a chip there and it just disappears. She's that fast at eating. And we go into some crazy backstory about how Bossoon and her went to some ramen place and she ate the ramen so fast that she got it all for free, I think, or something like that. And then the ramen guy wants revenge on them and somehow that has to do with them having a eat off at the Unyu family stadium that's apparently in that town underground. So they go down under the ground with the Unyu family like help, whatever, and then they have a massive eat off with two random guys called the something brothers as these is two fat <laughs> guys who are just like are eating champions or something that this ramen guy hired to try and defeat Bossoon and Captain, but Captain doesn't appear there, so Bossoon is forced to eat, and Bossoon, it's just like all these shonen tropes is going like crazy, it's like the most fast-paced thing I've ever seen, 
and it was probably the most bizarre, and like, it was like, you know, at the end of like a show, an episode, say Art Dunder or any One Piece, whatever, where it's just like a highly detailed freeze frame, they use that so freaking much, they overused it, but it's like for comedic effect, I think Himiko is like even commenting about how like crazy over the top everything was, but it's just freaking ramen, eat off. <laughs> and then there was a bit where um, Captain finally appears, and they pretty much recreated a scene from Yu Yu Hakusho, where Yusuke needs to unleash the inner power, inner beast within him, but he can't get there, so Taguro fatally attacks Kuwabara, in which everything just goes like kind of a whitish hue, and then like, the blood comes out, but in this case it was tomato juice, <laughs> it comes out of Bosu's mouth. And then the captain is just like suddenly unleashes her. I think it's called the Captain Munch. And <laughs> she pretty much just goes absolutely schizo eating crazy. And yeah. And it was a really bizarre <laughs> episode that I don't know what I think of it because it was so. I don't know, the art style looked very different in this episode. And it was actually kind of really. It was really fast paced, but it was really hilarious at the same time. I, I feel like it was so so fast that I completely missed a lot of stuff because it's hard to follow the subtitles while it was going because so much was happening, so much was being said and it was literally like we see what, something for one second and then it'll be changed to something completely different it was just a very fast paced episode but a very humorous episode of Skit Dance and it's episodes like this that really show you what Skit Dance is all about and I think this this is one of those episodes that really solidifies this as a great ensemble cast comedy. It's like, there's so many well-developed characters in the Skit Dance universe that they can really just play them in any sort of role that it, it just becomes funny. It's just funny the way they do it. And their, their use of like tropes and like making jokes of anime in general and manga even, it's just really fucking hilarious. And Skit Dance is just an excellent series. and. This episode really is one that, you know what, I say this is a must watch episode of Skid Dance. It was so fast paced, more fast paced than any other show I've ever, ever watched. I don't think I've seen an episode of anime that was this incredibly fast paced. I don't think anyone does a second when someone was not talking, <laughs> actually, to be completely honest. It's pretty damn crazy, and this is the craziest episode of Skid Dance ever, and I think it's a good starting point for my weekly reviews of Skip Dance, so you can check that episode out, I'll put a link in the description below to the Crunchyroll ep of it, and yeah, let me know what you thought of this episode in the little comments thing down below, and yeah, just follow me on Twitter, at LA Halliday, whatever, until next time, hello and goodbye.